Earth and other planets seeded with life. Scientists around the world dedicate years of their lives in search for answers to life's biggest questions. This is no different for two astrophysicists from Harvard who have proposed a theory on how life might have spread throughout the cosmos. Though the theory has initially been viewed with skepticism, Amir Siraj and Avi Loeb claim their theory should be taken seriously and, if anything, is too conservative when it comes to calculating how many times life-exporting events from Earth have actually occurred. So, the theory is, back when the solar system was more packed millions or billions of years ago, a gigantic comet came close to the outer reaches of our atmosphere. It was swiftly moving, several miles above the Earth's surface, too high to burn up as a fireball, but low enough that the atmosphere slowed it down. Exceptionally robust microbes were drifting up in its path, and some of those microbes survived the impact of the comet. These microbes ended up concealed deep within the comet's porous exterior, shielded from the radiation of deep space as the comet soared away from Earth and finally out of the solar system entirely. Thousands and millions of years went by before the comet ended up in another solar system with habitable planets. Finally, the comet collided into one of those planets, deposited the microbes, with many of them still living, and set up a new position for earthly life in the cosmos. Whether or not this actually happened is unknown, as there's no solid evidence that proves it. However, the pair of astrophysicists at Harvard claim that the depositing of microbes into a comet, which is then ejected from the solar system, should have happened. And not just once, but a few dozen times throughout the Earth's history. While the theory has been met with skepticism, there's actually good reason to suggest it's possible. In the 1970s, tests were carried out using a series of small rockets, which identified colonies of bacteria in the upper atmosphere. Comets do enter and leave our solar system now and again. A large comet could have grazed the Earth, and while comets are porous, it may have protected the microbes from radiation. Some microbes can also survive for surprisingly long periods in space. Siraj and Loeb suggested this happened multiple times, which may have caused other planets to be seeded with living microbes. One popular theory as to how life started on Earth also involves life being brought here on a comet which crashed into the Earth, kickstarting life as we know it. So our planet may have been seeded, or may have caused others in turn to be seeded. The Cando Event Cando is a small village in the northwest of Spain with a population of just over 1,000 people. The village has few distinguishing characteristics that would separate it from most Spanish villages. However, events on January the 18th, 1994 brought Cando to the public spotlight. On that evening, witnesses claimed to see a fireball in the sky that lasted for almost one minute. The fireball was said to be the size of a full moon and led many to assume it was some kind of meteor. The situation grew even stranger when subsequently a large explosion crater was discovered nearby. This crater was discovered in a hillside close to the village and had uprooted all trees in a 100 meter diameter and displaced up to 200 meters of terrain. However, what was never found was any trace of meteorites or any other object that could have caused this damage. Many were startled at how similar the scene looked to a Tunguskan explosion in 1908 that flattened around 80 million trees and killed three people. Like the Kando event, the most popular explanation for the events were that there must have been some type of meteoroid, but once again no remnant of a meteor was discovered. Many believed that the meteor in Tunguska disintegrated in the altitude before it ever hit Earth. A similar explanation has been put forward for the Kando incident but has not been as widely accepted. Hopes were raised further when an official investigation from the Astronomy Department of the University of Santiago de Compostela was opened for the events in Cando. Their findings were published in the Journal of Meteoritics and Planetary Science in 1998 and went against the meteorite explanation. The team concluded that the incident might have been caused by a blast of subterranean gases, which removed the topsoil when it suddenly exploded and soared into the air. 
when it rose into the air, an electric charge would have been created that would have been sufficient to ignite the gases and created the fireball-like scene that witnesses had described. However, this has not stopped other theorists arguing that the Kando event was the result of a military operation or alien activities. Japan Airlines Flight 1628 Incident The Japan Airlines Flight 1628 was flying from Paris to Tokyo when three strange objects were spotted. The sighting lasted 50 minutes in total and have been argued by many to be evidence of extraterrestrial activity. The crew first witnessed an irregularity when flying over eastern Alaska. To their left, they reported seeing two unidentified objects rising and escorting their aircraft. The objects were both square-shaped and cylindrical with a glow so strong it lit the whole cabin up. A warmth was also experienced that carried through the walls of the plane. Captain Taraushi was alarmed and immediately made a series of panicked calls to the Air Traffic Control Center to see if there were any other aircrafts in the area. He was told that none were showing up on the radar. No sooner had Taraushi heard this, he observed the two unidentified objects darting and moving around in a very erratic manner. It was also noted that a much larger craft loomed into view behind them. This larger craft was described by Taraushi as a mothership and twice the size of any aircraft. What's more, it was moving in a way that defied gravity. Taraushi would later report how it sped up, then stopped, then flew at our speed, in our direction, so that to us it appeared to be standing still. The next instant it changed course. In other words, the flying object had overcome gravity. Donald D. Engen, Vice Admiral of the FAA, gathered together representatives of the FBI and CIA and showed a recording of the events. Reportedly, after the video had played, he told the room that the incident was a secret and, if asked, the meeting never took place. It was only when John Callahan, the FAA Division Chief of the Accidents and Investigations Branch, launched an investigation that the incident properly came to light. Callahan accused the members of this secret meeting of confiscating and hiding the data from the event. The remaining evidence that could be gathered led the FAA to conclude that the sightings reported on the Japan Airlines Flight 1628 were a result of technical difficulties and a split radar image. Subsequently, Taraushi was discredited, despite his extensive experience flying planes, as merely a UFO fanatic. He was accused of having logged several other sightings during his time with the airline and therefore accused of being a biased observer. It was even suggested that Taraushi and his crew had simply become disorientated and made the silly mistake of misidentifying Mars or Venus. What doesn't make sense, and to some might even be seen as suspicious, was the treatment of Taraushi. When Taraushi gave an interview to two journalists about the events he had witnessed, the reaction of the authorities was to immediately demote him to a desk job and out of the limelight. For some, this fierce reaction to quieten Taraushi is evidence of a cover-up. The events that day on board Japan Airlines Flight 1628 were far more sinister than a mere technical error. It's bizarre why individuals are treated this way. If anything, it only helps the case of the eyewitnesses. As many have pointed out, it's an insult to those who have studied and worked so hard to become a pilot, to then have your name tarnished when you're being honest and telling the truth on what you saw. The Voronezh UFO Landing On September 1989, a group of children with civil servants and other members of the local community claimed to have seen a UFO. They were positive that what they witnessed was a mysterious craft. Not only that, but the eyewitnesses said that they observed three-eyed extraterrestrial creatures. The craft was said to have landed in a local nearby park. These terrible-looking creatures had three eyes and frightened the eyewitnesses. They described the being as being approximately nine feet tall. They were wearing a silvery outfit with bronze boots. They also noted that there was a disc on their chest. These aliens produced a shining triangle in the air, and it appeared like they were communicating with each other. Also with them was an advanced robotic-like creature. It's reported that after doing all of this, the mysterious beings then activated the robot with a touch. 
A boy who was watching all this while standing behind the tree screamed in fear. The creatures then looked at the boy and let out a bright light. This is reported to have caused the young boy to go blind, and later even paralyze him. When other children were asked to describe what the craft looked like, all of them drew a banana-shaped object in the sky and said that it left behind scorch marks in the ground. When this report came out, the witnesses were said to have been seriously affected by the encounters, going on to say that they would experience illusions and went on to suffer from various illnesses. On talking to witnesses, a story was starting to come together. Lieutenant Makveyev said he was a little unsure himself when he first saw the object. He said the following, I thought I must be really tired, but I rubbed my eyes and it didn't go away. Then I figured, in this day and age, anything is possible. This story was first reported by the Telegraph Agency of the Soviet Union. After considering all the statements and evidence, an official statement was released. An official said the following, The traces were still seen. I could see holes of a clear shape that resembled the footprints of an elephant. It's considered by many UFO enthusiasts to be one of the most genuine close encounter cases. Reports of Unidentified Submerged Objects USOs. Reports on USOs are not new. They go back many years and sometimes come from very credible sources. In one incident that the former US Navy commander David Freyer narrated is seeing a dark mass underwater while they were retrieving a drone for flying practice and described it as a big mass kind of circular. The second time the pilot saw the dark mass, a practice torpedo that the pilot had been sent to recover was sucked down into the ocean in the presence of underwater mass never to be seen again. In another interview, Freya revealed that a 79-year-old lady reached out to him after his sighting went public reporting that her father, who was a former naval officer, showed her a telegram which stated that unidentified objects had been seen going in and out of the water. In January 1965, Captain Bruce Cathay, a DC-3 pilot in North Island, spotted a USO and described it as a metallic, streamlined and symmetrical in shape, approximately 100 feet long and 15 feet on its widest part. The New Zealand Navy told Captain Cathy that no submarine could have been in that area. In January 1968, several eyewitnesses reported seeing a large disc-like object hovering over Wellington City heading to Island Bay. The area police reported that they could see the object from the coast with binoculars. Between 1957 and 1968, a Brazilian scientist, Dr. Rubens J. Viela, was startled by something that came roaring out of the sea through almost 37 feet of ice, going up to the sky like a silver bullet. Other witnesses saw blocks of ice that had been thrown into the air falling all around, and the water was rolling and boiling with a lot of steam coming from both the hole and the ice that was falling. In 1974, Two witnesses in Aranga Beach, Northland, North Island, reported seeing a very dark object protruding from the water, appearing to have smaller dots flying around it, and assumed that they were helicopters circling a submarine. The object was described as being approximately one thumb wide when submerged and ten thumbs wide when in the air. 